So you want to become a contractor. I have a special test and a video with a test for you. I literally want you to take a piece of paper and take this test. It'll take you no more than 10 minutes, I promise, super easy. But I want you to evaluate yourself and your skills. Are you even a fit for contracting business? Contracting business is tough. That's why 80% of contractors fail within the first two years and 95% of people fail in it in five years. So take a piece of paper, pause it right now. While you're doing it, like the video, subscribe and comment so you can come back later to finish it. But take a piece of paper or your phone and evaluate. The most points you can get in this test is 100. The least you can get is 10. So you're gonna get the number anywhere from 10 to 100. If you're gonna score anywhere below 50, I would probably advise you to work for someone else else and don't jump in the business yet maybe you need to learn a few more things before you're open so let's go so i have 10 questions here in each question you're gonna evaluate yourself from 1 to 10 10 obviously being the best and one is the worst number one can you manage money Contracting business is literally about managing someone else's budget. People are gonna give you money for the project. So let's say you're a roofing contractor. People are gonna give you $10,000 to start, $10,000 up on completion. That's a lot of money. I've seen a lot of contractors go and collect a whole bunch of checks, but because they could not manage money, maybe they were too young, maybe they have a poor childhood and now all of a sudden they have this huge amount on their account and their brain started doing tricks on them they start thinking hey i finally made it i have 100k in my account boom go on a shopping spree and failed now they don't have money to pay for materials to pay for labor they don't have money for the supplier out of business so how good are you managing money 10 means that you always have a budget for everything you probably at the age of 25 already have a retirement plan you always have a plan you're not a spender uh, your parents your sisters and brothers and your friends all can say that about you that you are good conservative spender you're good at the managing money don't lie to yourself because if you lie in this test you will not be for a good start in the business. Number two, are you organized? Uh, contracting business is uh, organizing a lot of different areas. You talking about labor, you talking about materials, talking about warehouse, you know, every once in a while I'll go to the business and stuff is laying everywhere. You cannot find uh, materials for the project. You, listen, if you wanna make good contractor you have to be organized and maybe it's five maybe you're like 50 50 maybe you're organized when you have to so be honest give you honest grade here number three can you delegate so many contractors are one man operation because they cannot delegate i was that guy years ago if you work for me you could only open boxes for me or sweep the floors but you would not install are you micromanager are you the one who all, always will do labor for your job because you don't trust anyone. If you wanna make it in contracting world, you have to learn how to delegate. And if it's really big struggle for you, maybe give yourself one. And if you're a master delegator, give yourself 10. My kids are actually even making fun of me now saying, dad, why are you never doing physical labor <laughs> around our house? Because honestly, I learned how to delegate, not because I wanted to, because I had to. To be successful, you have to learn how to give uh, less pain uh, jobs to other uh, positions in your company. So if you're doing $100 an hour work in your company, but you're doing $15 an hour tasks, guess what? Who's gonna do the $100 an hour? So sooner or later, you will have to delegate. And if you don't know how to, you will fail. Number four, how good are you with communication? Contracting is all about communication. Communication to, with the homeowners, ordering materials, um, different cities, pulling permits, com communicating with employees, setting up expectations. It's not just, all right, I saw the job, go do it. It's setting proper expectations for everyone around you. It's pretty much your full-time job, just communicate. You are middleman, believe it or not, like it or not, hate it or not, you're the middleman and you have to uh, communicate to all parties what is it that you're doing. You're pretty much taking money from here and spending here and you taking orders 
from here and given orders here. And you want to make sure that your communication is not broken among the way or you will fail. And if you're a bad communicator, maybe give yourself less points here. Good person to ask how good is your communication would be your spouse. Ask your spouse or your relatives. Hey, how good my communication skills? Number five, can you work under stress? Contracting business is very stressful. You have theft uh, happening on the job sites. You have material delays. Time is money and not always you can recoup um, what's been spent, what's been done. So you're gonna accumulate a lot of mistakes. Sometimes it's yours, sometimes it's people around you, but it will create enormous amount of stress. So can you work under stress? Maybe you're the person who just need to be eight to five. A lot of people are like, if you're eight to five job mentality, contracting business is not for you. Because if you arrive at a job and materials are not there, now you're sitting for two, three hours. But it also means at the end of the day, you might be standing late to finish the project and it's seven, eight. Not might be your choice, but you will be under that stress. So Mark here, can you work under stress? Number six, are you a good marketer? I meet so many contractors who failed here. They're hardworking guys and gals and they do magic with their hands, but they never can tell the story about what is it they're doing. Nobody knows their work exists because they never posted the picture. They never share the story. They say, well, my work speaks for itself. Well, guess what? Newsflash, nobody speaks to each other anymore. Everything is on the phone. So if your homeowner takes a picture of your job and shares it with the friends, you might get a referral. But do you want to rely on other people referring you or you want to take your marketing in your hands and start advertising your job? Look at that. Yeah, Where who, did he get this yeah, Who from? designed that? Huh? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger says, you have to work hard and you have to advertise. If you want to be a successful contractor, you have to do excellent work on the job site. Then you have to advertise your work for other people to see, to give you more work in the future. But it's very competitive and you're going to lose to guys who actually know how to advertise their businesses. Number seven, do you have thick skin when mistakes happen? Do you overreact? What do you do? From one to 10, 10 would be, yeah, nothing ever bothers me. You can pretty much come and destroy my car. I'm just gonna call my insurance, no emotions. And one will be where you come to the office and someone made one mistake and you just flip and scream and yell and just, oh, how people are so stupid. So in this business, you will deal with a lot of stupid people and it's your job to babysit them, to teach them, train them and hopefully get something out of them in return. Number eight, how's your customer service? Again, ask your friends and family about this one. I would recommend maybe even go test yourself in McDonald's or something. How are you serving other people? Like if I would ask you, make me a coffee and I complain about it because it was too hot, how are you gonna react? So contracting business is also a customer service business. You know, you can't be a dick about complaints. You have to be respectful. You have to be nice to people. Um, you know, you have to deal with their problems. You will have people literally watching you doing their job. Sometimes homeowners will not be nice to you. Some of them will not pay your bills. I mean, you always have to stay professional. You always have to deliver the service. And where's your customer service falls in? Are you one or are you 10? Number nine. Can you stay humble or are you a spender? I see a lot of contractors failing here. Again, just like number one, can you manage money? Maybe you can manage money. Maybe you think you can manage money, but as a contractor, you will also have some money on your account uh, that technically you can touch and you have to think about all the liability as a contractor you will have that you could use those monies for. So a lot of times I see contractors start buying very expensive stuff. I'm talking about big trucks, boats, big buildings, you know, fancy stuff. So I recommend you to be as humble as possible. So 10 would be, you're very humble. You're okay with the $80,000 a year salary for first five years of business. Number one would be is you're taking every penny from the business and you're spending it all the moment you have money on your account. So can you stay humble or you spend your humble is number uh, 10, 
spender is number one number 10 the last one in my test is are you good with your numbers i've seen so many contractors go out of business because they never knew what's going on if i call you tomorrow and i ask you hey do you know your numbers in general even in your personal finance and do you know how much you're spending on gas how much you're spending on food do you know how much you're spending on entertainment how much you're spending on your closing what what are the numbers like if you've never budgeted anything if you um, don't understand numbers maybe rethink about getting this career as a contractor Con good contractors have to know closing rates they have to know their numbers they have to know their net profit margins they have to break the, be able to break down big jobs and small jobs and uh, they have to know how much labor costs how much material costs they have to adjust fast so if you're not good with your numbers you're not going to be a good contractor so this is my test to prove that you have what it takes to become a contractor i'm just curious what you got so go ahead and comments below and drop the number were you 86 or 25 i want to know if you like this test if you like the idea behind it um, give it a like i always appreciate feedback trust me it helps algorithm on youtube i read all my comments i engage with you guys this is very important video for me because i'm a teacher of roofing school and i want to help as many people as possible and i want you to notice something that you don't see anything about work itself i assume that you know your trade whether you want to become a painter roofer or maybe a landscaper it doesn't matter what you do does not matter like i can go right now and open a drywall company or painting company if i have 100 score in this test why because in business what you do is not as important as customer service being a good marketer being good money manager being good with people delegation all of those skill set that's what's crucial just because you know how to install a floor does not mean that you will make a good flooring business owner the same goes for any other trade maybe it means that you're good at your trade and you should work for someone but it does not make you good business owner so my roofing school helps roofers become better business owners i want to hear from you drop your score below and if you want to talk about you opening a business and maybe um, take my advice or my help on your journey check out roofing school um, it's pretty affordable we keep it as low as we possibly can to make it happen for us here to keep making videos and online content we have tons of videos in the school and hope it'll help you on your journey thank you so much for coming subscribe to the channel if you're new see you guys in the next video